welcome to today's video where we're taking a look at the Genai H3 drone from Timu. I'm going to compare this to the E99 Pro drone that we got a couple of weeks ago. This is in the same price range and it comes in one of these little black zip cases. Although I'm not sure this is the correct case for this drone, it's still okay for the price range. This is £24.95 in the UK at the time of recording. It includes the usual stuff that you expect from Timu. We get some spare props there. We also get some thumbsticks for the controller and we get a screwdriver and a micro USB. We get four prop guards. We get the drone itself. Feels lightweight and plastic but for the price it's to be expected. Definitely feels like a toy and maybe a little cheap feeling. Same as the E99. It's a pretty similar design with the camera at the front. This one does have the two cameras. We've got a camera at the bottom. We've got a camera at the front. This is on a gimbal. It feels like a motorized gimbal, but it doesn't say that it has a motorized gimbal. So we'll test that out in the app in a moment. Two LEDs at the front for connectivity. And I believe this is the sensor at the top, which prevents it from banging into obstructions. We'll take it outside for a test flight. We'll also do a test flight indoors to see if it does actually work. The control is a little bit better than the E99 control. It feels plastic, but this one we do have a phone holder built in. We've got an on and off button there. A couple of icons on these buttons. And again, the analog sticks feel fine. So these just go into the controller like this. And then that gives you a bit more control. And then we get two batteries again, each claiming around 10 to 12 minutes of flight time. So we will put this on a timer and test this in a moment. The batteries have a micro USB port and an indication light for when it's charging. It goes into the back of the drone, the same as the E99, and it just clicks and locks into place. The battery is quite secure. Even when I crashed the other drone several times, the battery never once fell out. So. I am quite pleased with that. You've got the power button on the top, as we discussed, we've got the camera on the bottom and at the front. Remember though, these are toy grade cameras. Hold the button down to turn the drone on. The lights start to flash. And then with the controller, switch this on. Forwards and backwards to connect to the drone. Just like all the others really. Let's just check all the propellers work. Yes, they do, and it's trying to take off, so that's pretty good. Okay, then, let's take it outside and see how it performs. And now we've just brought it to my local drone spot, this little bit of field out here. I'm just going to try and stay away from the horses, though. We'll keep it over this side. But, yeah, let's test this out then, see if we can get it to fly. Make sure it's on a flat surface before you pair it up. Otherwise, it'll struggle to fly. And there we should have that set. Yes, that seems good. Okay, so we're going to do a little takeoff and see how it performs. Okay, okay, that's a little better. I've got to be honest, that battery started beeping quite quickly. It's only been around four or five minutes. Yeah, it doesn't want to fly anymore. So when the battery's really low, it'll still keep trying to fly, but it just doesn't want to come off the ground. change the battery I recommend all of you do this as well by the way if you've got drones or you enjoy bringing drones out to fly them I recommend you get yourself a little power bank bring out your USB leads and you can charge your batteries while you're still flying and then that way by the time you finish flying you've got a new fresh battery to go straight back into your drone so while that battery charges we'll put the new one in I'm also gonna add the thumbsticks to see if I can get some more control over the drone yeah, a lot more control. Uh, 
There we go. So it seems to be holding quite well. The yaw works quite well. Although when the battery starts to get low after around five minutes, it does start to lose altitude when you try to yaw, and the batteries seem to only be lasting around seven to eight minutes, not 10 to 12. And we do have, uh, yeah, and now we've lost full control. So this battery's done as well. We timed that one, we got eight minutes out of that battery. Now what I wanna do is I wanna fly this E99. Now this drone definitely performs better, or it did the last time I brought it out. Yeah, it's definitely a lot better. It's faster as well. You cut through that or not? Yeah, it does stunts a lot easier as well. The second speed is quite impressive actually. We seem to have more accurate control with the E99 as well. Also, with timing the batteries, these batteries do give us 15 minutes with this drone, so that's around double the flight time with each battery compared to the H3, which gave us 7 to 8 minutes per battery. Another point of interest is the stunts. The E99 Pro can perform stunts, first time of asking, every time without any problems. The H3 did perform the stunt once or twice. We couldn't get it to replicate every time, which made it far too unreliable for me. Yeah, we've definitely got more control over this one. I'm just going to give these batteries 10 minutes to charge to see if the, the flat battery was anything to do with it. Oh, we crashed into the tree, and that's a bit high as well. So at this point, we well and truly thought we had lost the drone. It was just far too high in the tree to reach. A few moments later. No way did that work. I didn't get it on camera, no. I just got it to do a backflip out the tree, guys. That was sick. The E99 is definitely my favorite now out of these two drones. Right, this is definitely race mode. Right, one such landing's not great because that just crashes it to the floor. Switching back to the H3 for a moment. One touch landing's just as bad. Yeah, this doesn't fly off as well. It tries to go down to the ground when you want to steer. It's refusing to perform stunts and just keeps beeping at me when I'm trying to use the obstacle avoidance, so I just find it unreliable in general. The application this time is RCFPV, 
I have a few of these drone apps, but it's this one we need for this particular drone. To connect to the Wi-Fi, all you need to do is hold your Wi-Fi tab, grab the drone, power it on, and then you'll see the drone pop up on screen here. Press to connect. It might say you don't have an internet connection, but that doesn't matter to us. Just back out of this page now. Reopen the drone app and press start. This should give you access to your live feed and the camera now. You can select photographs and video from here. To be honest, it's not a really good quality. The camera does perform better on the H3 than on the E99, but the E99 is faster, performs the stunts more accurately and more regular, and has a longer battery life, and it's the same price. Although there's no obstacle avoidance here on the E99, if I had to recommend any of these drones, it would definitely be the E99. You can find both of these drones linked down below, and if you found any part of this video helpful, or if you enjoyed any part of it, please consider leaving a like on the video, subscribing to the channel with your notifications on, that way you never miss any future uploads. Thanks to each and every one of you guys for being here, I really appreciate that, and until next time, take care of yourselves and each other. I'm Craig, this is Really Random Reviews, and I'll see you in my next video.